Thank you. <coughs> I have a question for you all. Um, I would like to know who of you participated in last week's general vote for the government. Please raise your hand. Wow, I'm pretty impressed. That kind of destroys my intro, to be honest. Because I wanted to say, ah, oh, why aren't you going? It's such an important thing. And um, I want to talk to you about new ways of political participation. And um, me as a designer, I like to look into society. I like to see how groups develop, what they strive for, social movements, subcultures. But that, what I really like most is activism. Activism for our environment, activism for peace, activism for human rights. And if you think about it, all this is about change. If you go a bit deeper, you can actually detect some sort of political transition. Right now we have good old democracy. We can go vote, we can go into the streets to demonstrate that we're not really happy with what is going on. We can even sign petitions. But with all this new technology, the internet, moving into our daily lives, it also transforms other areas. We just heard it, and it is the same with democracy, which is called e-democracy. And in e-democracy, you're actually able to vote at any time, or everywhere where you are. You can form communities without actually physically meeting. And you can participate in an enormous number of ways. So for me, the question really is, what are these ways of political participation? How could they look like? Why can't they be fun? Like seriously, why does it have to be such a hard business taking part in politics? So why don't we create a game? So think about the fact you're sitting in the tram like every morning, you're looking through the metro, and you're pretty bored, and suddenly you stumble over a double-side announcement from the government asking you for your opinion. And it explains the certain political issue, and it says, if you get out, out in the next station, you have to decide if you go left or right. Yeah. So if you go right, you're against this thing, and if you go left, you're for it. And once you reach the top of the stairs, there's cameras tracking the amount of people going up. And you can actually, through data processing, immediately see how the society thinks about this current issue. Next morning in the train, you sit again, and you can actually have this page having the real numbers of the poll, having a very nice thank you from one of the ministers. And, I mean, this is great, isn't it? This is fun, this is convenient, you can do that every day. Now you might say, politics is a serious business, we can't play around with these things, that's ridiculous. And you might be right a bit, a bit. But I also think, and I'm not talking about the change of politics, I'm talking about prototyping new ways. And this is faithful participation. It doesn't have to be serious. I want to show you what I bluntly call the model of influence. So in the middle we have the elected representatives. They should actually make the decisions, and they do. Around that, you have a circle of influence, how I call it. And there are experts and consultants hired by the politicians. You have a lobby that really does a lot. And you have the media. And I ask myself, where are we there? I mean, I don't feel represented by the media as much. Why can't we be part of this with our new technology, regular interaction? And this is where e-participation kicks in. I believe we can just create our own lobby. It's about enabling influential interaction between the government and the civil society. So, create our own lobby, use the tools we have for your democracy, and that with ease of play. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Um, judges, to you. Say something. Um, I think your slides are very well designed. Thank you. Um, uh, do you know the private or what is called the pirate party? Yes, I do. Okay, because I think your ideas are kind of similar. They are in the. I think you could vote for them in the last elections, and they are really about. Yeah. No, it
when it came to this uh, movement in the environment. They're pretty um, important, I believe. They have, they have something which is called liquid feedback. Right. And it's a, a platform where you can actually discuss certain policies. But if you go there, it's, it's horrible. You, know, you don't understand the thing. It's, it's not for people, everyday people. You really have to be into it. So there's, that's what I'm also talking about. You know, designing ways of participation that are approachable for normal people. So maybe you can cooperate with it. Hmm. Possible. It would be great, yeah. Do you think as uh, everyday people, they, they really want this, this kind of influence on the government? That's a good question. I think they should. I think, they, I think that's a duty. I think they should. And I think if they have the opportunity to do it in a way that is suitable for them, then they will. Yeah, I believe that. Any further remarks from the judges? I, I would like to go back to the, the intro. Hmm. Because uh, there are some changes here, some strategies. Uh, so you asked, right? Uh, who voted? Me, yeah, everyone. Had. I was really impressed. So, uh, who is uh, satisfied with the influence he had in last election? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A good start for his people. And I know a second one. No, no. Yeah, we yeah. should talk the next time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read uh, Hannah Arendt uh, lately. Uh, critiques of our uh, representative democracy, and she's been criticized a lot for being critical about her this holding. <laughs> but uh, her argument is quite clear. Who thinks that you can change the world in a room as small as a toilet uh, in your on your own by putting a red dot on a piece of paper? That's what our elections are. That's what our democracy is. And let's improve it. Uh, Maybe some questions from the audience. Gentlemen, first question. Uh, do you think this constant interaction should directly influence the way uh, decisions are made in the uh, 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 in the government? <coughs> so you should have like a, a constant interaction between a large group of people influencing this small group trying to make uh, a steady force. Basically, I'm, I'm not talking about immediate implementation. I really talk about prototyping ways how it could work. Um, I do think there is the possibility of regular interaction, but um, we shouldn't touch yeah, the autonomy of the elected representative. Okay. It's really about lobbying. Okay. They do it also, so why wouldn't we as people do it? And you think it's also possible to measure this, this type of lobbying, because the lobbying that now takes place is really personal. People talking to companies, people going to Shell, and Shell got their, uh, their stakes. And this would be, because I really like the idea, but how would you, yeah, can you elaborate on, on this interaction? Or? It's not, I think it's not that easy, but I, I do believe that there are already some uh, organizations that have political influence. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I do see the potential to create organizations behind these kind of uh, interactions mm -hmm. that have the power to, to influence and to personally talk to people. Yeah, so they're organizations, not individual people. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you have over there? And on the one hand, for your game to work, or for your lobby to work, you need IDs. So you need to get IDs on the attention, then you have a lobby. On the other hand, for your game to work, you also need to have IDs, which may spring from the lobby. So which comes first, the IDs or the lobby? Well, I personally think that um, there are a lot of ideas already, and they, they really need to be discussed. And I, that's one part where I really agree with um, my former speaker, it is about people that explain certain things that are too complex for us. And once they are explained, we can also decide on them. So it really, it starts with a new idea, a certain issue, then it comes to the point where people can decide upon it. Thank you.